In my opinion, the second generation Volvo XC60 is the best looking SUV in this category by far. But what is this? This is a rookie design flaw. It's just hilarious how simply can the dirt, dust and snow gather and get trapped on this part of the rear doors. This feature is not positive for a couple of reasons. First of all, this dirt tuning doesn't look very nice. Then the trapped dirt, tiny rocks, eventually road salt are gonna help in spreading of rust in the future. And lastly, the small flying rocks from the road are gonna damage the paint, which again is gonna contribute to rust in the future. While you can eliminate most of this with cleaning this area regularly, you can't prevent the rock damage with a simple regular cleaning. This particular XC60 has only 10,000 km. It was used on winter salty roads too, and it already has chipped paint on both of the rear doors. And I can guarantee you that these things would not be there if the door sides would be protected properly. And how? Well, like on the new Toyota Highlander, for example. Or the engineers could simply design the rear doors the same way as on the previous generation XC60, where, as you can see, the edge of the door is protected, since it's not part of the rear fender. Listen, I don't know if the engineers had a very long-lasting party during designing the rear doors. But one thing is for sure, they had to think about this issue at least a bit since they put this plastic piece onto the rear door edge. Sadly, this is not good enough. The only good thing about this is that you can buy genuine Volvo plastic mud flaps, which you can very simply install. The next good thing is that these mud flaps cost like 20 or 25 euros, which is a great price considering that this is a genuine Volvo part. The only slight disadvantage of this is that these mud guards are not gonna eliminate this issue for 100%. As you can see, after fitting them and using the car, there is still a small amount of dirt on this lower part of the doors. However, if we compare the door before and after fitting these parts, then this is still at least a 90% improvement. So it's definitely worth to buy these mud guards. Now let's check out how easy it is to install them. First you have to remove this Torx screw. For this you will need a Torx T25 bit. Next you have to remove the three plastic fasteners. These you can usually remove by hand without any tools and also screw them back with hand only. After this you can attach the mud guard. Make sure it's attached properly and gently pull the upper part towards the exterior of the car to make it more or less flush with the fender. Screw back the plastic fasteners. Don't use big force, it's completely enough to tighten them with only your fingers. Lastly, there is the Torx screw, which you should tighten up like a human as well and not like an animal. And that's it. The end results may vary, and it's possible that the mudguard is not gonna follow the contour of the door for 100%, but this solution is still better than no solution. By the way, you can also buy very similar mudguards from China, however, they are more expensive and I have no idea if they are better than these or not. But let's go back to the fitting process for a moment, because some of you are maybe wondering if the dirt had not found its way to other not visible places in this area. So, if you want to be very thorough, then you can remove this seal and also look behind the fender liner and clean these places. To look behind the fender liner, you have to remove both of the lower Torx screws and obviously the three plastic fasteners. After this, you can unfold the fender liner in this place. Then there is the rubber seal. Before removing this seal, I have to warn you that inside of this seal there is this kind of a sticky sealant. This means that if you remove the seal and later put it back, then it most probably won't sit in place that tightly as before, since you damage the sealant and also dirt gets trapped in it. So if you don't have time, tools, wax or some sealant which you can put instead of the old one, then you should leave the seal in place, so don't remove it. But in this case, let's remove it. 
The upper part of the seal is attached by a plastic clip. To remove it, you have to look behind the fender. After unfolding the inner seal part, push both of the sides of the clip and then you can freely remove the seal with the clip. As you can see, there is a pretty big amount of dirt here, which is definitely not positive. The lower part of the seal is held in place by similar but smaller plastic clips. You don't have to remove them, but you obviously can. Now you should clean this area of the body and also clean the inside of the seal. It's definitely worth to either put wax on this part of the fender or you can put some kind of a not very strong sealant inside the door seal and put it back in place. The other kind of a design flaw on these cars is the front grille. Yes, it looks great, but the space between the narrow parts of the grille is just too wide, which means that the rocks from the road and even the bigger bugs can more easily hit and damage the radiator. As you can see, in this case of a car with 10,000 km and on an example with only 4,000 km, the radiators already have signs of damage. Sadly, there is no official genuine solution for this, but some creative owners have put a metallic mesh behind the grille. To make things complete, I have to add that these cars are available with a couple of different front grille designs. So this type is maybe not that vulnerable to letting the trash through, plus the diesel engine cars and maybe even the hybrid versions have active air flaps behind the grille, which if closed are obviously not letting in anything. These cars are still pretty new, so I can't tell you anything about the possible issues or reliability in general, but cases of occasional software issues, mostly related to the multimedia system, can occur, as in any other newer car. Let's be honest, the already mentioned design flaws are not major issues. Yes, they shouldn't be there, but there is nothing like a perfect car and I would also rather be at a long-lasting party than sitting here making this video. Listen, this car does have many positives too, like the very nice interior, great optional air suspension, great safety, many interesting technologies, awesome design and so on. Plus, from my early look, to me it seems like this XC60 is much more service slash maintenance friendly than the other comparable cars in this category. And there are actually numerous very well designed things on it as well. So I didn't do this video to discourage you from buying this car, but I'm also not saying that you should buy it immediately, since nobody is paying me to promote it. Lastly, if you have this car with the Haldex type 4-wheel drive system, then don't forget to replace the oil in the rear differential clutch, preferably every 30,000 or 40,000 kilometers to extend the lifetime of the pump. Plus keep in mind that you should also remove the pump to check eventually clean the tiny mesh on it.